Hey everyone, welcome back to Sam's Shower Thoughts. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sam. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I hope you are ready for the shenanigans I have for you this week. If you are new and this is the first time you are seeing my face, welcome. I make weekly videos dissecting internet nonsense, so if you're into that type of thing or you like today's video, I hope that you'll consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel and make sure that you never miss another upload from me. Also though, today's gonna be a little bit more interesting because it is a shower thoughts video. If you've never been here for a shower thoughts video before, this is where I'm doing a little less research, a little less scripting, a little less editing, um, but it's still really interesting conversation, uh, mostly deep thoughts that I've had in the shower because the shower is the number one place where you come up with ideas and talking points and you don't have a pencil or paper to write them down. So what I do is store them up here and then I bring them to the channel to share with you all today. And today is gonna be extra interesting because I want to look at the topic of childhood obesity and whether or not that should be considered neglect on the part of the parents. And bear with me, I know that this is a very hot topic. Let me get some of my thoughts out and then I want you guys to comment and tell me where you are uh, because this is just something that I, I have literally been scribbling little notes and thinking about it all week. So let's dive into it. Oh my gosh, you guys, I almost just choked to death on my spit and I, I almost just died. It was really dramatic. I forgot how to swallow water. I just really didn't realize that I needed to chew it first. Um, yeah, I am. I, I almost died. It was a, a near-death experience, like my life flashed before my eyes in front of this camera. <sighs> I won't show you the footage, though. I'm not ready to talk about it fully yet. That'll be coming in a later video. All right, all of that, <laughs> all of that aside, sorry, I'm feeling a li little extra something today. So this video topic kicked off for me this week, um, these sort of shower thoughts. Um, I was catching up on Shakara Transformations channel and she said something in one of her videos, I think reacting to Jordan Hall, that when a child is experiencing obesity, that is neglect. So child neglect, it's neglectful on the parents' part. That is actually really sad that she has been obese in such a long, since such a young age and in my opinion, it's child neglect and at, depending on the severity of the obesity it's probably verging on child abuse that's that's my opinion as an uh, as a parent you are responsible for your child's health and for your child's well-being hey rosie and part of that is making sure that your children get the right care in terms of exercise and nutrition and I have always sort of had that same thinking, right? Like the parents obviously control what they're purchasing, what they're putting in their house. But the more I thought about it, especially after I made my last um, Shower Thoughts video, where I was talking about the way that food has been marketed to children, um, I related it mostly to millennials. So if you wanna go back, um, it, there is a playlist for the Shower Thoughts videos. You can find it there. But she said that, and I had this moment where I was like, yeah, I get that. I get that line of thinking. Again, it's the same way that I have thought because the parents are in control. But then I had this train of thought happen where I was questioning sort of even my own response of thinking that it's child neglect, right? So stick with me. I know this is a heated topic, but I definitely think it's one worth exploring together and talking through. So um, for my out of country viewers, I'm going to be focusing on the US when I talk about this. Um, and I'm going to be focusing specifically on my experience being um, middle class. I've been lower middle class, middle middle class, upper middle class, all of those ranges. So we'll be focused there in this conversation just for context purposes. So in the United States, um, specifically, I'm in the Midwest. Um, 
it is not unusual for people to have children very young. And even if they don't have their children young, really anyone can have a child. There's no prerequisite course to take before you have a child. And while it would be nice if we were getting some sort of education to prevent that from happening at such an early age, we don't in the United States, classically. Um, that's an issue. You see it. It's politicized. It's everywhere. But even people who are my age in their 30s and above are having children. And there's there's no training that goes into that, right? A lot of parents become parents without even a general understanding of what it takes to raise a child and help a developing brain grow in a healthful, mindful way. A great example of this is a lot of people don't realize that in early childhood, your child's brain is making like a million neural connections a second. The brain is rapid firing, it's learning a lot of new things, and that's why kids can soak up information like sponges. And there's even been new research recently saying that kids need as little as 30,000 words before they're three to be able to build a really good vocabulary and to help them excel academically later in life. Those are things you can set in place before your child is three to help them become a better achiever throughout their entire lifetime. Like, that is so insane. Like, you can literally mess up your kid before they're three. If you're a parent out there, I'm really sorry if I just scared the shit out of you, but it's totally possible. And this is one of the reasons I I can't become a parent now, but I never really wanted to become a parent. I feel like I don't know how to be responsible for myself, let alone another little independent human being who needs to learn and be able to achieve, right? So just keep that in mind. We don't even know the basics. We don't understand that kids need to play. We don't understand that kids have special development needs. There's nothing that teaches us that in any meaningful way, especially if you're not taking like child psychology or something like that in school, which is where I learned most of what I learned. And it's related to my field. I've mentioned before I work with teachers. So if we don't even know the basics, think about that in relation to nutrition. How many Americans have any understanding of nutrition? We clearly have an obesity epidemic happening, right? And that is a result of that marketing that I was talking about in the last video lobbying of our government so um the food pyramid is how we're learning about food tv is how we're learning about food everything in the grocery store is brightly colored being marketed at us all the time even worse for parents they're putting cartoon characters on those packages so that the kids then want their parents to buy them junk food it's a problem so if a parent has not learned about nutrition outside of from the food pyramid and the TV and they don't fully understand a child's development it's kind of a it's kind of a formula for disaster right especially when we're talking about parents who might be struggling with their nutrition themselves now trying to take care of an independent little human being when they know nothing about nutrition like it's a cycle and, and I think that's why I kind of mentioned it in my Millennial Shower Thoughts video, but every generation after the Millennial generation, after, like, we even coming after the um, Xers were fatter than them. The Gen Z population is fatter than us. Like, it's a real societal issue in the United States. And so I guess I'm also curious, even if a pediatrician was working with a parent and telling them, this is the nutrition that your child would need for proper growth, are they going to listen to the pediatrician? And following that same line of reasoning, it's become even more of a talking point within fat acceptance 
that doctors don't know what they're talking about when it comes to nutrition. Don't trust doctors. They've not had nutrition training. With the hate that doctors get from these people who are overweight themselves and now having children who will then become overweight, they don't even believe that doctors know what they're talking about. So are they going to listen? I would venture to guess no, since as we talked about, these generations are just getting fatter and fatter and fatter as time goes on. And it's kind of terrifying to think about, right? That, that they're not willing to listen to a doctor and that they are willing to, to potentially put their child at risk. And so again, I can kind of see where that's neglect, but stick with me. I promise, I promise there will be a point here, um, in these thoughts. So I mentioned at the beginning for anyone who's outside the United States that I was going to focus in specifically on the middle class. Um, group. Um, And I could probably touch um, on low income as well, because I have experience working with folks um, with low income backgrounds. But part of the problem as well, when we're saying that it's neglect, um, is sometimes I don't think that's a choice for the parents. In the US, we also know that we have an issue, a societal issue when it comes to corporations kind of owning us, right? Like we work and we work and we work and we can barely afford to live, especially if you're in the middle class, especially if you're below the poverty line. Sometimes people have three jobs and that's barely enough to keep the lights on. Like it is very intense. And so like I mentioned this a little bit, even in my own story of when I was growing up. So my mom, single mom, had the three of us She worked a lot and she worked a lot of overtime and we were home by ourselves, um, latchkey kids, even though I'm a millennial. Um, And it wasn't so much that she didn't care. She did care and she tried to teach us the best that she could. The problem is she just wasn't home to do it. She needed to work to be able to provide for us. And so then that became an issue as a part of this. But then also there were times where she would seek things that were convenient. Something that was in a box that she could just throw on the oven for a few minutes, something that she could throw um, on the stovetop or in the microwave. Those convenient meals became key because she did not have time to maybe do as much of the food prep or the different things that she wanted to do. And she did try her very best. But because she had to work so hard just to keep us alive, like keep our livelihood, how much could it be hurting us to go for those convenient foods, right? We have an FDA, we have a USDA, we have all these different government entities that are approving this food and putting it in our grocery stores. How dangerous could it be? They're allowing these fast food chains to exist. How bad could they be? Every time I go to the fast food place, that I uh, there are people there, lots of people there. So people eat like this on the regular, right? It becomes a slippery slope. And that convenience becomes so important when our lives are constantly go, go, go. And so on top of not understanding that nutrition, based on our societal standards, especially for middle class people, The convenient foods are what we have to live off of because there's no other option. You work or you're homeless. If there's no time in between work and the school things and everything else that's happening with your children, what are you going to feed them? How are you going to have time, right? And it can feel a little bit hopeless. Now, add in the element of being a low-income family, right? A family below the poverty line, you're getting what you can get. And a lot of times those options aren't great. And a lot of times they're doing their best, even though it's the worst option out there. And there's nothing that they can do about it, right? So I guess my brain was sort of struggling with that notion of saying that a parent is neglecting their child when they are actually, actually trying their best and then potentially still feel like they're failing. 
it feels harsh to put that on the parents when clearly there are also some societal issues, at least within the United States, that are also to blame. It's not all of the parents' fault, right? They are doing their best in most cases, I think. I'm sure there are cases where there are not, but I think most parents are just attempting to do the best that they can. And so labeling them as neglectful, it's really hard for me because I'm a type of person I always try to see both sides of the coin. I want to see where people are coming from. And it's so funny to play devil's advocate with my own brain because like I said, when, when Shakara said that, that that's child neglect, I was like, you are absolutely right. I also think that. And then the more I thought about it, the more I was like, damn, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's a little more to it, right? Because my mom was not neglectful. And I just, like, there was nothing that she could have done better for us. She did everything she could. I've told that story. We did not eat a lot of fast food growing up. She had, she cooked for us. We had normal meals. We had vegetables with every meal. I just, her food was bland. My mom was not a seasoner. She's like the whitest of the white cook. <laughs> I didn't learn seasoning until I moved in with my, with my now husband. Um, that was a whole thing. But she still did her best to make sure that we were eating nutritious foods and trying new things. But to think that there are children who did end up being overweight because their parents are in a similar situation and then equating that to being neglectful just broke me. I guess I'm curious, like, what do you guys think? Have you ever had this sort of conversation? Have you ever thought about it that way before? I just, like I said, I was there just listening and, and initially I agreed and then suddenly I was like, Maybe there's more going on here that we need to investigate um, because it's a lot. There's a lot of background that goes into it. And sometimes that's why I'm like, okay, I see where fat activists are trying to go with this thing when they talk about some of these things being societal issues, et cetera, et cetera. But they always take it to this like crazy tangent that I just can't get behind. But like a point like this makes perfect sense to my brain. And so I wanted to share it with you all today and just get your feedback. What do you think? Would you now classify it as child neglect or a societal issue? Do you fall somewhere in between? I'm curious to know, guys. It's a hard one. It's so hard. I, I'm still like waffling between, but I think I'm leaning more towards it, it being a societal issue rather than just parental neglect. Please share your thoughts with me in the comments below. I love reading them and I'm honestly looking forward to these because y'all, I cannot with these shower thoughts. Like they're always taking me somewhere else <laughs> entirely out of this world, out of existence. I, I'm curious to know what you all think. As always, thank you for being here with me again this week. I will see you in the next one. Bye.